Luther King Jr., who once said that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Justice is the most important, most central ideal that all prosecutors should strive to achieve. Today, I am pleased to announce a transformative shift in how prosecutors in Ramsey and Washington counties conduct our work to ensure justice and public safety. One of the most fundamental aspects of to achieving justice is that punishment at some point must end. Our practices in the justice system need to account for reconciliation, rehabilitation, and redemption. The problem today is that too many people who have con who've been convicted of misdemeanors and low-level felonies uh, can't move on from their convictions, even when we have asked them to do everything, uh, and they've done everything that we've asked them to do, because their criminal records brand them with a scarlet letter indefinitely. Uh, this is true because of the widespread availability of criminal records, which we as a society must recognize only uh, reflects one aspect of a person's life. Having a criminal record has been used as a litmus, a litmus test to deny people opportunities for good paying jobs, safe housing, education to better their lives and those of their families, and much, much more. It's time that we, as prosecutors charged with administering justice in our communities, remove that scarlet letter when people have earned it. And that is why the expungement statute exists. If the prosecutor agrees, the law directs the court to seal criminal records of eligible people unless the judge determines that there is a public safety reason not to do so. But it will only happen if prosecutors make that a priority, and today that's what we're announcing. And I also want to be absolutely clear. We recognize that public safety does require that our community know about people who have committed serious and violent crimes, such as murder, sex offenses, physical and sexual assault, or repeated criminal conduct. And that's exactly why the legislature designed the law so that none of those offenses are eligible. Some of the most common offenses uh, that would be available to people would be low-level drug possession cases, theft, receiving stolen property, property damage, forgery, check or credit card fraud, just to name a few. So when people have paid the price for their misdeeds and atone for the harm that they have caused, who are we as human beings if we do not put into practice deeply held moral values around redemption and forgiveness? I have heard the clarion call for mercy for people who have been rehabilitated. Justice requires that there must be an end to punishment. Today we're pleased to announce a transformative effort for, your, for our offices to proactively help rehabilitated people seal their criminal records through a new website called helpsealmyrecord.org. Starting today, people with a criminal record in Ramsey or Washington counties will be able to apply online to our offices to seal their record and alleviate the collateral consequences that can last a lifetime. And in fact, uh, both of our offices have already started receiving applications. And by doing this, what we do is that the applicant will not have to hire an attorney. They won't have to pay the $300 per petition filing fee. In addition to the cost barriers, we also have learned that many people who are eligible to have the records expunged don't even know about this law. That's why our offices will continue to proactively reach out to eligible people like we have this past summer working with the Southern Minnesota Regional Legal Services, SMURLS, which is our legal aid uh, organization here in the East Metro. And we have some of our uh, people here, and uh, Jesse Nicholson, our executive director, is here. And I want to thank you for being a part of this and the staff of SMURLS. We really appreciate the partnership. Um, I'm also confident that, uh, that our greater community, uh, through our county board, our community foundations, our law schools, and nonprofit agencies, uh, that they all, we all care deeply about uh, this issue and they will join us to collectively expand our reach to help raise awareness among people who might be eligible and connect them to this uh, important opportunity. 
Uh, one of those partners is our Ramsey County Workforce Solutions, who has already raised their hand uh, to work with us to help connect the people that they serve with criminal records to see if we can help them. I'm just really excited about thinking about all of that, those partnerships and the differences that we can make uh, for people and the lives of people in our community. And I really believe with all hands on deck and with all of us in our community pulling together, we can make a real difference. So as we ex continue to expand our efforts as prosecutors to enhance uh, justice together with our community, we will transform our justice system into one that administers compassion and accountability, rewards rehabilitation, and allows for redemption. I uh, wanna end by thanking uh, really my dedicated staff who really made all this possible because they were operationalizing uh, this vision. So Tammy McConkey is here, Jorge Saavedra is here. Uh, thank you for all of your uh, leadership in this particular area. And um, I also wanna thank my uh, county manager and the board of commissioners who first uh, approved uh, some of the budget requests that we made uh, a long time ago back in the spring of 2018. And of course, uh, I wanna thank our partners, uh, Attorney General Keith Ellison. I, it's uh, just wonderful that you are here and I know that you are an ally in this work and a leader in, in doing the work that needs to be done to improve the quality of justice uh, for all people here in the state of Minnesota. And of course, I want to um, recognize uh, my good friend Pete Orpit, the Washington County Attorney and his staff uh, just for their partnership. Uh, Imran Ali is here and, and Pete is here as well. And then also, uh, uh, this is also a partnership uh, in our justice community. Uh, and Jim Fleming, who is our chief public defender, has also been involved as an ally in, in making this all happen. So with that, I wanna introduce um, uh, the other partner in all of this, which is Washington County Attorney Pete Orpin. Thank you, John. Uh, it's a high honor for me to be here with John Choi. Every time I team up with him, I feel like we make a real difference. It's also an honor to team up with my friend Keith Ellison, who's our Attorney General, and has taken us where I've always wanted to see that office go, so I'm really grateful. Uh, this is all about doing the right thing. It really is, and that's what we swore an oath to do, do the right thing. Now, here's my position on this. When someone commits a crime, there should be some shame around that. There should be. It should be embarrassing and shameful that one decided to commit a crime. And the way out of that is to come in, to own what you did, to make amends as you can, to pay your restitution, and behave yourself. And then we're done, the transaction's over. But it's not over. And I've gotten letter after letter in my nine years as county attorney from people saying, I was convicted as a young kid, an 18-year-old kid, of marijuana possession. Now I can't sit for the CPA exam in Washington because I have this record. Well, how many of those did you get before you say, what are we doing here? And it's not necessarily us. It's the criminal justice system, which has really taken a branding iron to people. Some deserve it, but what about those who do make one mistake once in their life? Do they get any expiation? And you know, what drives me is all the great religions have an atonement, have a way to confess and make right so they can get back in but we don't in our criminal justice system. I want these folks to have every opportunity they can get. And you know, another thing is, I get about 400 young people a year come into my office with a small amount of felony drugs. And you know what happens? No student loans, your housing is restricted, you may not even be able to get into college. Well, what am I doing to help that person get off their drugs? Throw them in jail and that's the right thing to do? No, the right thing to do is get them back on track. And so they can have a family and they can raise their kids and I don't have to monkey with them. I can put my effort into the real knuckleheads that are running around committing crimes. This isn't gonna help them. This is gonna help the people who did a one-off mistake and they wanna have it over. And I want them to have it over. That's doing the right thing. So I'm really excited about this, John, and I've talked about it for years. I'm grateful that he took the leadership and said, let's just get it done. We did get our website up this morning, and already we're getting people coming in. And that's just, that's feeling like we're doing the right thing to the right people at the right time. Maybe overdue, but we're doing it. So thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it, General. Yes, sir. Let me uh, thank you, you uh, Pete and John, for this tremendous effort. It represents expression of a simple idea, is that we need all of our people. We need the talent, the skill, the ability of everybody. 
And if somebody has screwed up, got themselves in trouble with the law, been held accountable, but then done everything we said, we cannot afford to just throw them in the garbage keep of, of our society. We've got to find a way for them to come back into our community, and that involves expungement. Now, look, you can get an expungement. The law's there if you got thousands of dollars to hire a lawyer, or you can work through this 25-page document. I mean, this is a true legal exercise. I know some attorneys who'd have a tough time dealing with all this. As a matter of fact, we've got to simplify the system, and the effort that Ramsey County and Washington County have come together with this website is simplifying that system, making it much easier to say, you can sit for that CPA exam. You can apply for that apartment. You can reclaim your life and start contributing to the society that you once violated, but now you've done what we've asked you to do, and it's time to get on with your life. Be a model to your children. Contribute to the community that you live in. Pursue your career. Get good housing. And do the things that are going to keep you from being back in the criminal justice system, quite frankly. You know, we're with you 100%. We believe in what you're doing. We think that it is the right thing. I am very encouraged to see our chief public defender here, which is great. Usually, we're on either side of the, of the courtroom uh, fussing about something. But we're on the same side today. And we want to help and say thank you to our friends who operate in the civil space Absolutely. is Southern uh, Minnesota Legal Services because it really is going to be a team effort. I would like to let you all know that we love this idea you're doing so much that on Saturday we're going to have, with your support and partnership, uh, an expungement fair. Uh, it's Saturday, October 5th from 11 to 1 at the High School for Performing Arts in St. Paul. It's a joint project with Ramsey County, but we know our Washington County brothers and sisters are right there. Yeah, and it's gonna be, we're gonna get some uh, a pitch in from Mitchell Hamlin Law School students and University of St. Thomas Law School. And we'll have volunteer attorneys on hand to help people understand their rights and their process. And those lawyers, volunteer lawyers, are gonna be really important because this is what they're facing if you're trying to get an expungement. But your effort is great. My big hope is that other counties, we got 87 counties in the state of Minnesota, uh, will catch on to this and we put people back in their most productive space and allow them to hold, hold their heads up high again, having made a mistake once in life, but having met the court requirements to get their records sealed. So that's all I have today. Thank you all very much. So if they were to, if, so what the expungement is, it, it seals someone's record, but it's still available um, for other purposes. And so to, to, to the extent that the criminal justice system would need that information, it would be available to them. What expungement is all about is with the proliferation of criminal records and the industry that has popped up around it, right? It's so easy for people to check somebody's criminal history when in the context of an application for housing or whatever it might be. And oftentimes in that context of trying to seek that employment or whatever it might be, that information is available to a member of the public, right? And so th what expungement does is it simply seals a record so that if you were a landlord, you would not be able to see that if the case were expunged, and, which means sealed. Now, with respect to a subsequent criminal activity, right, that is something that could be considered by law enforcement and could be utilized in a, in a fashion that would still be relevant. So, just to follow up really quick, so if somebody yeah. reoffends and right. then goes through their treatment or rehabilitation, do they still have the opportunity 
No, because they would still have to meet those waiting periods. So the way that the law works, and we can talk to you, like, because this is very complicated, like after this press conference to make sure that you fully understand how the waiting periods would work. But the way that it would work is that if you have been diverted or you had received a stay of adjudication, there's a waiting period of one year, right? And then, of course, you can't have you can't have had previous offenses. And then, if it's a, a misdemeanor, I believe it's two years waiting period. If it's a gross misdemeanor, it's four years. And if it's a felony, that's eligible. Now, keep in mind, it's not all felonies, OK? There's a list of a number of enumerated felonies. The most common one, I think, would be fifth degree drug possession, OK? There's a five-year waiting period for that, right? So that's how that would essentially work. And of course, if you had, if you came in with other un ineligible offenses, you would not be able to get an expungement on those particular offenses, right? The John Cronin from the Air Levin, just a quick question, this is probably a reflection of my ignorance, but um, does this waiting period begin after probation ends? Is a person off paper first when the waiting period starts? That's a great question. And so the waiting period would uh, start after you have completed your sentence, which would include, for these types of offenses, uh, probation. Bill, some length of probation. Bill Hudson, John, I don't know who wants to take a stab at this, and I totally understand the law, but to the uh, land, landlords, to employers who obviously are concerned about their <coughs> stake in this, who may think that past behavior is a predictor of future actions, how can you allay some of their fears that these minor offenses <coughs> should not be uh, considered in, in their employment or in their rental? I can do that, Bill. Okay. I'd look at the landlord and say, have you ever made a mistake in your life? Hey, have you ever done something you wish you hadn't done ever in your life? Because this guy did. And it was at least five years ago, more like about eight or nine, because they serve a long period of probation. He did. Does he ever get it behind him? Does he? And if the landlord says no, then maybe the guy doesn't want to live there. I'm really serious, Bill. I've had people want to argue with me about this, and they want to make it what it's not. They want to make it some kind of hug-a-thug. I remind you that John Choi said it does, it's always about public safety. And public safety is about giving people a path to redemption to get them back into society working. So they're not relegated to doing sheetrock and lawn care. Those are honorable jobs. But when you're foreclosed from anything but that, it starts to seem onerous. I do also, while I'm here, I do want to thank Southern Minnesota Legal Regional Legal Services. They've been a good partner for us in finding people that we could contact and say, you know, you're, you look like you're eligible. You might want to get on top of this. They were a big help. And now with our website, I think we won't have to chase people down. And, and with the General Ellison's big fair on Saturday, hopefully they'll come to us. We can review them. If they got it coming, they're going to get it. And like the general said, if you try to do it yourself, it's like you copied the directions for building a space shuttle. It's, it's so arcane. And, and, and on top of that, you got to pay $300, and you got to serve at least five parties. It's just not easy to do. So we can say we're expunging, but we're not. Today, I think we really are. We're making that effort to clean up people's records so they can get back and do what they do. May I just add, we're not changing the law. The law is what it was this morning and last night. What we're doing is simply saying that there is an online uh, process for this, and it will be subject to the same rigor that is in the statute now. So don't be concerned that, OK, they're, what are they doing here? No, we're making it online, and we're overcoming some of the hurdles that are already in the law within the discretion of the prosecutor. So it's, it's not, this is simply expediting a legal process that exists now. Quick follow up from that, Attorney General. Uh, this is, uh, I applaud Ramsey County, Washington County for this, but what about statewide? What about all the other counties? Uh, how, how can they, uh, you know? They can, they can follow an excellent example of these two counties. My office is having a expungement fair on Saturday. Uh, I, I will tell you that uh, I think that, that the leadership that, uh, that, that John and Pete have shown is going to catch the attention of a lot of other folks because, you know, the truth is, 
as much as prosecutors are pursuing justice and holding people accountable, we do want people to leave productive lives and we don't want return business. So the bottom line is, uh, I think that this will be an attractive idea going forward. And, and Bill, can I just add one more thing too? So the, the vision around the website, help sealmyrecord.org, it's really potentially a tool that could be used for all 87 counties or cities, whoever wants in on this, who has the authority under this law. We're, what we're taking advantage of is there's a, there's a provision in this expungement statute that really gives the power to the prosecutor to say if they agree on any of these eligible offenses, they can short circuit and expedite this process for lots of people. So the website could be a place where, you know, basically you would click the button in which where you, your criminal conviction would reside. So if you happen to have a, a conviction in Candy, Ohio County, and the county attorney wishes to be a part of this program, we could easily facilitate where they would connect, click on that button and it would go right to, it would submit an application to the prosecutor. Uh, and then the prosecutor could then do some of that legwork to help that applicant uh, address that issue because they might be living in Burnsville. You know. A question to Clark, and then we'll move on. Uh, Paul Martin, WCCU Radio. Um, I'm thinking about when Mr. Choi said earlier that this is a, a transformative shift, and a, a question for the, to the county attorney. It's just generally about this shift to a more, you know, compassionate, even benevolent, um, uh, you know, uh, county attorney's office, and just prosecuting in general, and just what you're seeing nationwide, and what's been like for you in your career. I, I could talk. I've been doing this for about 34 years, and uh, uh, I've got a minor reputation for being aggressive at it. Uh, and you know, and I have been aggressive at it. But I've come to realize over 30 years uh, certain truths about things, and that's that you got to get it right in this job. You got to figure out who's the miscreant and who's the person that made a, an unfortunate mistake. And you can't blur those. You really can't. You got to get those right. And part of getting it right is I realize that there are a number of people walking around with a conviction from me that they can't get out from under. And that doesn't feel fair. I'm all about fairness. That's what John said. We're ministers of justice. We're about getting fairness. Now, we focus on victims. We focus on the people who've been ripped off. But there's also somebody else in that thing. And I want to be fair to the defendants as well. And, uh, and that, I think, gives people respect for the system, and I think it works a lot better when people respect our criminal justice system. That's my view. Well said. And I would just add one more piece of that, too, which is I think that when, as prosecutors oftentimes, and part of this is just because of the volume of our work. There's just a lot of cases that come through the system, and so oftentimes we are kind of like case processors, right? And so. Uh, Someone, you know, we're a complaint-based system, so nothing happens unless somebody calls 911 or there's some incident that someone's responding to, right? And then the police deal with that, and then if there's a crime that they, they believe has been committed, they investigate it, they send it to us, right? And then we do our part, which is to hold the offender accountable, do right by the victim, to ensure justice. If someone needs to be diverted or they need to be punished or whatever it might be, we do that, right? But then oftentimes we're then, once we're done with that, we move on to the next case. And that situation gets then into the next part of that assembly line, which is the corrections budget. And we assume that rehabilitation would happen there, right? But oftentimes it, it really isn't happening. And a part of this rehabilitation and redemption, I believe that prosecutors have a role in ensuring that justice uh, is strong, it, the quality of justice is there for everybody in our society. And that means also paying attention to what happens to people after, your, after the conviction, after the sentence, to ensure that um, uh, we're doing the right thing. I mean, there's just so many people today with criminal uh, records. I mean, the FBI uh, estimates about a th uh, one third of our population has some form of a criminal record. That's a tremendous amount of people, right? And again, we're talking about misdemeanors, gross misdemeanors, and uh, low level felonies like fifth degree dope cases. People can move on from addiction and all of those low level offenses and they can be productive uh, members of society. But if we don't make sure that the punishment ends, uh, we're doing a disservice to the quality of justice for people in our community and uh, for public safety as well. May, may I just add that we are in the middle of a national conversation around criminal justice. 
we are, in fact, when I was in Congress where I was for 12 years, I co-authored a bill that never got passed, but I suspect one day it will get passed, with uh, Rand Paul, who is a pretty conservative guy. That bill was to say, look, should we have mandatory minimums in federal drug sentencing, or should we let the judge, the prosecutor, and the defense attorney and probation sentence that person right, who's, who's looking right at them, as opposed to Washington sentencing them who never met the person and has no idea about the case. So there is, and that was not the only thing. There was, there's a general conversation going on. We, we learned a lot about the crack epidemic versus the opioid epidemic. You know, we used to have front end loaders going through the walls of uh, public housing. And we used to say that if you got a drug case, uh, you couldn't get a student loan. Now we're saying, did that really work? Was that the right policy? It's healthy. It's good. I'm proud to be a prosecutor, but for many years of my life, I was a defense attorney. I can tell you it's not about one job or the other. All of us should be trying to create a just society, which has accountability and redemption. And so that's the, but there is this, this big, conver- this big old conversation, this is one little manifestation of it, but it's happening everywhere all the time. Tim Nelson. Tim Nelson, NPR. You mentioned there was a filing here. Um, I assume there are courts of some kind. Is there court supervision to this? Is there, you know, this, this is a multi-party process. How do the rest of the parties in the criminal justice system interface with this? Go ahead. Well, so there are, the statute does lay out some process and procedure, um, but the most important thing is what's not, so there's a, the expungement statute, but what it contemplates for the most part is that there's a petitioner, and that petitioner is the person that is seeking the expungement, and, and if you read that statute, you'll see just the onerous burdens that we put on that particular petitioner in terms of the fee, and then the things that they have to do to actually serve um, uh, law enforcement agencies and the health department and the BCA. It's just really cumbersome. What, there's another provision in that statute that short circuits a lot of this and allows for the prosecutor uh, to basically, if we were to agree that someone is eligible for an expungement and, and they deserve one, then what we can do is then take parts of that process and notify the certain, we'll take on the burden of notifying the BCA, et cetera, and then the judge, of course, has then has that petition that we submit, the prosecutor, okay? Without a hearing, it can be just done administratively. There's, there's no need for a hearing. We just give them the paperwork, and if the court, I, I suppose if they felt like they wanted to dig in deeper, they could order a hearing, uh, but for the most part, if they're satisfied with what's been presented, and the, their legal standard is if they don't believe that public safety would be jeopardized in any way, then they go ahead and, and administer that. And there's no fee paid by anybody. And so this is a very, very powerful tool in the statute that the legislature created about three or four years ago. Um, it's been uh, utilized uh, just somewhat uh, in the metro area, uh, but this is really taking that provision and lifting it up and doing it in a bigger and better way that really helps people. So it sounds like a judge ultimately Right, the judge will have to sign on the dotted line to say that I agree. Last question in the back. I know we'll have time to chat individually, but I want to. Uh, I just want to ask if they actually live in the country, Tom. Sure. Right, yeah. So I don't know their name. I'm sorry. Jim Fleming. Mr. Fleming, I'm just um, wondering from your perspective, uh, you, you deal with these folks quite often, I imagine. So what, what would this My clients. Mean? Well, I have the uh, experience of having actually brought petitions for expungement both before this law that John is referring to was passed. So I was doing this prior to 2014, which made it almost impossible to get an expungement. You could get a small expungement basically sending just the court record. Now, the list of felonies, which I think most people are probably concerned about are mostly property offenses, small drug offenses, and actually I think that when the legislature was looking at this, there was a, I think there was some, there was some testimony that these types of offenses generally do not see high levels of recidivism. 
So you're talking about a one and done, light touch offense. Kids, particularly young men, brains don't develop, we're learning, until they're about 25. So you've got someone who's made a mistake, done something stupid, uh, suffers the consequences of it, and then can't get any, re any, any relief from it. It follows them the rest of their life. And of course, with the advent of the internet, they can never get away from it. So what, what John and Pete are doing is essentially looking at the case that's presented and eliminating and, and checking to see that it meets the statutory requirements and eliminating the, the need to have that first hearing, which there's going to be counties throughout the state that are going to require that everybody show up and have a hearing and pay the fee and all of that, even when you've made the prima facie showing that you're eligible to get this relief. So John and Pete have, you know, I mean, this is a great opportunity for them and we're, you know, very, very happy to be a part of this. And that's, that's really how this benefits. Now there's other collateral issues that come up later like, um, you know, did you, did you notice the correct data harvester, data harvester to get the case taken out of the data pots that send it off to the, you know, to the landlord or to the employer? Um, that's, that's a second hurdle that we have to deal with, and I'll talk to the General Ellison about maybe some legislation that could help in that regard. But this is, it, it's, a, it's just as they said, this is a chance to give somebody a, a chance to say, hey, look, it, you paid your price, you paid your debt, let's get you back on, let's get you paying taxes, let's get you productive, let's get you a member of, of society, and everybody's moving on. And I, it, it makes sense. It fits within our, our, our principles. I, I, I don't see anything wrong with this. There's nothing wrong. This is a, a wonderful program, and I, th I would hope that most of the counties get behind this. Yes, that, that for job purposes, but it's still, they could still do a background check and find this information out, and then you're done. So. All right, well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time, and we will be around for extra questions, sure. and we want to send out a uh, to all of you about the number of people in there that you know, you know, a lot more detail uh, around yeah. Minnesota was moving forward. Thanks, all of us. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, you're very man. much. You're man. Thank you. John, Thanks you're awesome.